Hello and welcome. For today's tutorial, we're going to be upgrading the ASUS UX32VD to a solid state hard drive. As you may be aware, the ASUS UX32VD comes with a solid state hard drive, but it's only 32 gigabytes in size. It's more meant to be a cache um, that operates in between the RAM and the 500 gigabyte regular state hard drive that ships with this unit. One of the things I really like about the UX32VD is that you can upgrade it to a more modern solid state hard drive. Um, and that gives you some flexibility to upgrade to whatever size you want. One thing to be aware of uh, in doing this tutorial, you're gonna avoid the warranty on your solid state hard drive. So I'm not sure if I would do it with some of the larger, more expensive models. In this case, we're using the OCZ Agility 3, uh, which I actually just picked up off Amazon for only $70 after rebate. So in this case, if the drive ends up failing, I'm okay um, taking the risk that it won't be covered by the warranty. Um, so to get started, you want to flip the device over and you want to remove uh, 12 screws. They're a Torx size 5 screw, uh, which I'm told is the smallest Torx size that they make. Um, I actually didn't have a Torx size 5 available, but I was able to use this uh, mini sort of precision flathead screwdriver and fit it inside sort of the star shape of the Torx head. Um, when you're removing the back unit after you've taken all 12 screws out, one thing to keep in mind is that along the back where the hinge is, there's a strip of adhesive. And uh, so it'll kind of feel like it's stuck and you might be worried you're missing a screw or you're gonna break something. Don't worry about it, just kind of work it back and forth until the adhesive finally releases and then you'll be able to um, take off the back. Okay, so before we take out the hard drive, we first have to unscrew the battery so we can get access to the screws that are on the side here. Um, to unscrew the battery, you use a regular Phillips head screwdriver. And to save time, I went ahead and unscrewed uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Um, and in addition, you wanna disconnect, there's two places the battery is attached. One is right here and these little uh, little connectors here. So we'll undo that one, and then we'll undo this one. And now the battery should lift right out. Like so, there was actually one other pin uh, right here was connected to the board right there. So now we've set the battery aside. And that gives us access to these two extra screws right here and here. Again, just a Phillips screwdriver is all that's needed. Okay, so the hard drive will pull out towards the back or towards the side right here. I'll kind of work it out. There we go. Um, so here's the 500 gigabyte hard drive that came with the device. Uh, again, four more Phillips screws here, 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 and here. And this chassis, in order to maintain the thinness of the unit, is actually separate pieces, like so. Okay, as you can see, we've removed the stock hard drive. And although I originally said I was going to put in my Patriot drive, which technically should have fit inside this space since it was less than 7 centimeters tall, because of the orientation of the SATA connections, having the power over here on the right and the data on the left, that meant that the fatter part of the solid state hard drive chassis was on the bottom and it actually pushed the connectors up above and I wasn't able to slide it in. Um, instead then I've got this OCZ Agility 3 solid state hard drive that I took out of a different machine, 120 gigs. And um, because this has easier access with four screws, Phillips head, in order to open up uh, the chassis of the thing, to get to the controller board, uh, I decided to use this instead. Plus this is a cheaper drive because um, I did have to avoid the warranty. I picked this up for $70 after rebate. Um, and so if this ends up breaking and I can't cash in on the warranty, I'll feel better about that than having lost my Patriot drive, which is still selling for around $120 to $140. So you took out the four screws and I went ahead and did that off camera to save time. Um, once you do that, you just pull out 
the uh, top, I guess we'll call this the top, the silver piece. And then there'll be four more screws inside here, 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 and here, also Phillips head. And once those are removed, the entire controller board will come out like so. You can discard this piece because uh, you won't be needing it. Uh, what you want to do is you want to take the top silver piece, like so, and you want to drop the controller board inside, so that way it'll sit inside this device. Because remember, this is now upside down from the way it was originally oriented. Um, so the screw holes don't line up. Uh, then when you put it back inside the laptop, you'll see that the connectors line up perfectly. Um, and then after that, you'll attach the brackets like so, and your unit will be securely in place. Okay, once you have your chassis screwed back in, uh, your custom chassis, you reattach the uh, brackets on each side and screw the top plate back into the unit. Then you want to go ahead and slide the solid state drive into to make sure it lines up. And then you want to go ahead and just, in these back two holes here, and this is how we're going to ultimately secure uh, the solid state controller board, is you want to just kind of score it. Um, and I'm doing this instead of using a pen because the hole's really small and a uh, Sharpie wouldn't fit through. So just kind of score it and that'll let you know where to drill your holes. Um, once you've scored it, go ahead and take the chassis back out and then you're going to drill a hole here and a hole there so that way you can secure the controller board uh, to the chassis that you've customized. Okay, once you've got your holes drilled in the chassis, um, here and here, you want to go ahead and screw the unit back in. Um, for the record, I used a 1 16th inch uh, drill bit, and that seemed to fit the screws that we had taken out of the solid state hard drive when we were pulling apart. Now that the control board has been screwed into uh, the custom chassis and everything is firmly in place, go ahead and replace the battery. Okay, one thing to note um, in putting the battery back in place, uh, I noticed that the end of our little custom chassis here uh, was actually blocking this piece of the battery. So I had to take uh, some needle nose pliers and bend the end up. Um, this may be able to be avoided if the chassis had been mounted the other way, but I had already drilled uh, my custom screw holes, so I figured it was just easy to, easier to bend up these tabs um, rather than try to turn the whole thing around and re-drill the holes. Also, I like it because it gives it a little protection on the back end um, as well, on the back end of the control board. So, other than that, um, go ahead and reattach your battery in the three spots. Uh, don't forget that this spot right here reattaches by actually clicking down. It doesn't pull out like it looks like. It's a little bit different connector. And uh, it's the same goes for when you're initially popping it off. Um, you want to lift up on it. Or if you pull the whole battery back like you saw me do, then it, it kind of just comes off on its own. But when you're putting it back, pop it straight down. Um, after that, just screw the back on and then enjoy your new solid state hard drive. And I really appreciate you guys watching this tutorial. Hope you learned something. Thank you.